Lynn, are we good to go? That's a yes. All right. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Mon nom est Jacques Tremblay. And I'll, I'll get to sit a few more times over the next two and a half days. I'm the president of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. I'm very proud to be as well for our fantastic 50th anniversary. I will preside over this morning's meeting. It's with great pleasure that I welcome you to the general business session of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries annual meeting here in Ottawa. We have an excellent program plan, and if you're registered for the meeting, I'm sure that you'll enjoy the next two days of our professional development as well as the gala celebration of event tonight that we've planned. Je vous encourage également à prendre le temps de découvrir la belle ville d'Ottawa pendant votre séjour. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge uh, and thank our sponsor, which you'll see on the screen, our grand patron, grand patron is RGA. Uh, patrons are Origin, Deloitte, Elliot Bauer, SCORE, Society of, Society of Actuaries, our sponsor at the benefactors level, our Axis, Pascal Martineau, Anoveri, KPMG, Lucier, Dale, Parizo. And we continue to expand in the exhibition, exhibition area. And as you see the exhibit out there, we have the Actual Student National Association, the Casualty Actual Society, Anoveri, KPMG, Oliver Wyman, and RGA. So please drop by and visit uh, during the break. The, avant que nous plongeons dans les affaires officielles de l'Institut, je voudrais profiter d'un moment pour présenter quelques invités spéciaux. I'm extremely pleased that we have 28 past president of the CIA attending this 50th anniversary meeting. So I know that you guys are early riser. So if I can get you to stand to be acknowledged. Actually, I, I want us to do even better than this. I had dinner with these fine people last night. These are the pioneer. We are where we are here today because of these people. At one point in their time, they decided to commit to the Canadian Institute of Actuaries and be president. And, and I know from my past year that it's, it's a fair commitment. And, and even, I think it was even more back then. So if I can get the past president to rise one, la one more time, but now I want everybody to stand up and give them a standing ovation. Thank you very, very much. I would also like to welcome 12 leaders from the other actual, other actual organization. So would you please stand and be acknowledged? We have Mary Miller, president of the American Academy, Tom Wildsmith, who's president-elect of the American Academy of Actuaries, Mary Downs, executive director of the American Academy of Actuaries, Peter Temple, president of the Actual Society of South Africa, Bob Michaelis, president of the Casualty Actual Society, Cynthia Ziegler, executive director of the Casualty Actual Society, Don Siegel, President-Elect of the Conference of Consulting Actuaries. Derek Cribb, Chief Executive, Institute and Faculty of Actuaries. Nicole Seguin, Executive Director, International Actual Association. Errol Kramer, President of the Society of Actuaries. Craig Reynolds, President-Elect of the Society of Actuaries. And Greg Eidrich, Executive Director of the Society of Actuaries. So if I can get you to rise and please acknowledge our dignitary guests. I would also like to acknowledge, to recognize the actual foundation of Canada. We are pleased to support their many good works, and one of the ways we do this, in addition to a small speaker gift, is we'll make a donation to the actual foundation of Canada on behalf of each speaker at this annual general meeting. So congratulations to the actual foundation of Canada for all the good work that they do. Now, this part's a little tough. It's our tradition to recognize those members who have recently passed away. J'ai le regret de vous annoncer le décès de huit membres depuis notre dernière assemblée. John Atchison, Gilbert Allen, Alastair Fernie, Norman Hendricks, Ron Hoskins, Jack Roberts, Ike Rosenberg, 
and unfortunately Jeff Guy. I will ask you to stand and we will stay for 20 seconds of silence. Thank you very much. You have to bear with me for the next two days. I don't get to be president that long anymore. And I get to do what I want with some restriction. So this is one of those things that I get to do what I want. Our volunteers' dedication and hard work are critical to the success of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries and our ongoing strength as a profession. Sans les efforts de nos nombreux bénévoles, nous ne serions pas en mesure de rencontrer notre plan stratégique. At our annual meeting, our volunteer awards recognize members who have made a significant volunteer contribution to the Canadian Institute of Actuary. But there's another award, which is my award, the President's Award which was established in 1998, and as the name suggests, is a unique recognition that is the exclusive responsibility of the president to confer. In honor of our CIA 50th anniversary, and again, I get to do what I want, <laughs> I have selected six CIA volunteers for the president's award in appreciation for their exemplary service to the institute. Now, they know who they are, they don't know who the other ones are, there's only 10 of us who know who they are. And over the next two days, I will reveal their name and I promise that I would give them their 30 seconds in the sunlight. So why six? Well, we have one for each decade of our anniversary of the CIA existence. And there's a French tradition, which is one more for good luck for the next 10 years. <laughs> so, j'ai choisi six candidats pour le, le le récipient du trophée du président pour cette année. Le, la, pourquoi six? Une tradition francophone où, quand c'est l'anniversaire de quelqu'un, on rajoute une chandelle pour l'année prochaine pour leur souhaiter bonne chance. Alors, j'en ai choisi cinq, un par dix ans, et puis un autre pour l'an prochain. The, these six individuals have devoted their time and energy to moving the actual profession forward in Canada throughout the work of the Canadian Institute of Actuary. This recognition is more than well deserved by all of them. My first president award goes to Robert Brown. Rob. Rob Brown is an FCIA, an FSA, and an associate of the Casualty Actual Society, as well as an honorary fellow of the UK Institute of Actuaries. If that's not enough, folks, Rob is currently the immediate past president of the International Actual Association, past president of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, and past president of the Society of Actuaries. Rob's expertise and research focus on retirement income security, social security, and property casualty insurance. Professor Brown has been very active on the speaking circuit, often speaking more than 25 times per year in Canada and beyond. Rob has authored seven books, published more than 50 articles in reference journal. Rob currently serves on the Committee on Public Position, on the participation to the IAA Committee, the Health Committee, and the Task Force on Genetic Testing. But in reality, most of us know Rob Brown as Professor Brown, Actual Science, University of Waterloo. It is one of the finest actual program in Canada, and some say one of the finest in the world. It's actually a formidable program producing fantastic Canadian actuaries, actual talent, because of you, Rob, year after year, and we thank you profusely for that. Yes, 
it again. I have to personally thank Rob as well as he's walking back. The, if it wasn't for him, I likely never would have met my wife, Teresa. The, uh, Rob was the appointed actuary for cooperators in Guelph, as well as teaching at Waterloo at the time, and Teresa was an underwriter at cooperators, and she wanted to do something more challenging, so she cornered Rob for coffee, and Rob talked her into getting to the actual program at Waterloo, and one of her corrupt terms, she was at Prudential of England when I was working at the time. So here we are, 30 years later, three kids, still very happy. So <laughs> thank you, Rob. <laughs> it's my honor. All right. Nous procédons maintenant à la séance des affaires générales de l'Institut. As voting will take place for the usual business of the meeting, we'll determine the number of members present to ensure quorum, and the vote on each motion will be conducted with a show of hand. John Dark, our Secretary Treasurer, will serve as Secretary. So John, if you can come here. Lynn Blackburn, Les Dandridge, Chris Fiavoli, and Eric Mastro Pietro will serve as Krittner. The notice of the general business session was sent to the members on May 13, 2015. Accordingly, with the consent of the members, I'll dispense with the reading of the notice. The secretary has received proof of the notice being sent to members, so I'll direct that the proof of notice be annexed to the minutes of the meeting. For the voting procedures, please note that each fellow of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, as well as each associate who obtained associate status five years or more, who is present, is entitled to one vote. An associate, having obtained associate status less than five years ago, correspondent and visitors are not allowed to vote or to make or to second motions. We have 474 fellows and 36 voting associates of the Institute present at this general business session and over 627 persons present in total. In order to establish that we have a quorum of the meeting, I will ask that all voting members of the Institute stand. We have well in excess of the required 100 voting member present. <laughs> so if any member requires a precise count. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I then declare that we have a quorum. <laughs> the agenda for the voting is posted on the screen. Puis-je demander au secrétaire trésorier? I have to translate for John. <laughs> Presenter une motion pour approuver l'ordre du jour. John, please present the motion. Uh, I'd like to present a motion that the agenda be approved as presented. May I get a seconder? Nancy, is there any discussion on the motion? And I'll put the motion to the meeting. All of those favor, please say so by raising your right hand. Any opposition? Passed. Thank you. Carried. May I ask the Secretary to present a motion to approve the minutes of the general business session held on June 18, 2014. I move that the minutes of the general business session of the June 2014 annual meeting be approved as presented. May I get a seconder for the motion? Angelita? Is there any discussion on the motion? You guys are a good crowd. Yeah. All of those in favor, please say so by raising your right hand. Any opposed? Passed. Thank you. I now would like to ask Jim Christie, Chair of the Election Committee, to present the election result report. Good morning. I'm here to present the report of the Elections Committee. 
Uh, election committee members for 2015 were myself as chair, Steve Bonner, Christian Biasa, Simon Curtis, Marc-Andre Melanson, Dennis Shetler, Kathy Thompson, and Stuart Wayson. Uh, Michelle Samara is an ex officio member, and we were ably assisted. In fact, most of the work was done by Lynn and Shirley Ann. The results of the election uh, were announced a while ago, but just in case you are in the dark ages and haven't heard, the president-elect is Dave Dixon. Secretary-Treasurer, by acclamation, is John Dark. And the four new directors are Claude Ferguson, Denise Lang, Minaz Liani, and Mark Tardif. Congratulations to all of the winners and to all of the candidates. So it wouldn't be an actuarial presentation if it didn't give you a few statistics. So uh, this year, we had 1,409 members vote, which represents 32% of the eligible membership, uh, up from last year at 30%, and up dramatically from 2013, where we only had a 17% vote. Uh, I would encourage all of you to please vote in the next election, and even more importantly, please run in the next election. <laughs> in terms of uh, distribution of voters, it was reasonably close uh, geographically to the membership itself. Um, Ontario uh, voted a little more than uh, their proportional representation in Quebec, slightly less. In terms of uh, distribution by practice area, uh, again, reasonably close in terms of vote relative to membership uh, distribution. And uh, finally, in terms of distribution by year in which you received your FCIA or your ACIA if you were there for more than five years, uh, this one uh, indicates again that by and large, uh, membership voted relatively proportional to their uh, years of fellowship. Uh, the election in 2015, uh, a couple of points, that we continued to have the uh, candidate discussion forum. The number of hits was up significantly, almost double from last year, so it seems that more and more of you are using that discussion forum to, in, to help you decide on who you're going to vote for. I'd like to think that's because we had such a terrific ballot this year that you really had to go to decide who you wanted to be your representatives. Associates with voting rights uh, could vote this time around. This is the third year, and uh, the, we did have a number, uh, I fielded several queries from really keen new associates who haven't been around five years, so I encourage you to keep getting ready so when you hit the fifth year, you can vote. Uh, we use the electronic voting system as the only way to vote for the second year. Uh, we had a minor technical glitch and unfortunately had to restart the, the balloting with the appropriate uh, options on the ballot. So participation is up. But still, uh, we have a long way to go before we get to uh, uh, at least 50% of the members voting. Uh, going forward, the 2016 election committee was appointed by the board of directors yesterday. So uh, recruiting for the next ballot starts today. Anybody who wants to be on the ballot, I'm looking for you. I'm the guy with the yellow tie, so look for me. And we really do want to encourage as many people to run as possible. And despite what Jacques may have said, it is a great job being the president. <laughs> and it's not all that time consuming. <laughs> so please consider running. And please vote. Thank you, Jim. He's right. <laughs> the, the next item is uh, Dave Dixon, President-Elect, 
will now address the assembly via video clip. Good morning. I'm David Dixon, your president-elect. I'd like to start by congratulating the CIA and ourselves on our 50th anniversary. I think the CIA is one of the greatest organizations in the world, and certainly a leader among actual organizations. I would also like to thank all those who voted in the last election, especially those who voted for me. Je suis désolé de ne pas pouvoir retrouver votre aujourd'hui. Alors que vous visionnez cette vidéo, je flotte sur le Danube, quelque part entre Budapest et Prague. Nous avions réservé ce voyage il y a plus d'un an, bien avant que je l'envisage de me présenter au poste de président désigné. Friends have asked me why I wanted to be president elect and then become president of the CIA. Stealing from David Letterman and cutting back a little bit, my top five reasons are, number one, I've served on various CIA committees, task force, and councils. I've been chair many times. As chair of the Eligibility Education Council, I was on the board as a, uh, as a non-elected member for three years. So there was nowhere to go but up. Number two, though I have a busy retired life, I'd like to do more for the CIA. Side note, retirement is great, and I still ask myself, how did I ever find the time to work? Number three, my working and volunteer careers, I've always enjoyed challenges and are up to the task of being a president, elect, and ending president. Number four, I've known and worked with many past presidents and have greatly respected them. I always dreamed of being in that select group of CIA volunteers. Number five, the CIA is a great organization and I look forward to the opportunity to make it even greater. Just a brief word to those who might consider running in a future election. Like many people, I was a little fearful of having the campaign and then maybe losing. But I enjoyed campaigning. It gave me the opportunity to reconnect with some old friends. I'm still trying to schedule lunch with some of them. I've been asked what would I change if elected. I'm very familiar with the board's strategy and their implementation plans and agree with them, so there's no major changes. However, after spending some time thinking about it, I think there's a few areas I'd like to see the board emphasize more. One, one of the main strengths of the CIA is its army of volunteers. There's a board strategy to better manage them, and I think we need to do more and move faster. Our volunteers are critical to the future success of the CIA. All of them are valuable, and I would like to see us do a much better job of encouraging others to volunteer, and also urging some of them to take on leadership roles. For younger members, we should do what we can to develop their leadership skills. When I was EEC chair, I led a task force to develop an education strategy and is now being implemented. This is extremely important, and we need to make this a higher priority so that we can better decide how to educate actuaries of the future. There are a lot of moving parts within this strategy, and they need to come together to form an effective education system. Over the last three years, I've worked with some of our academic members, and we've made great progress in better involving them within the CIA, getting us closer to Canadian universities. We've also started programs to help us meet these goals, and we need to continue these efforts. In my working and volunteer careers, I've always been good at working with processes to make them more effective and efficient. In my new role, I will be exposed to more parts of the CIA and look for opportunities to make it even better. I wish I could be with you in Ottawa, but as you're seeing this video, I'm probably floating somewhere on the Danube, celebrating the CIA's 50th anniversary with a glass of wine. I look forward to the next three years, and my promise to you is that I will do my best to make the CIA an even better organization. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you, Dave. I would now like to ask John Dark, Secretary Treasurer, to present his report. When I presented this at the board yesterday, I was asked to hurry up, so I'll, I'll give you the, the summary version, which is, we thought we were going to lose half a million dollars and we made half a million dollars. I feel like a, a Canadian finance minister. <laughs> uh, the, the reasons are, are shown here, I'm not going to go through them all. 
essentially it's a timing thing. So I really feel sorry for Rob, the incoming president, who's going to have a deficit this year. <laughs> and the two Jacques, both the good one and the bad one, <laughs> made money. Um, so some things like our CRM system and some of the expenses for this 50th anniversary got, got pushed forward, and that's why we had the change. And you shouldn't be alarmed that, the, that there is a deficit because um, it, it's all part of the plan and we've done forward forecasting uh, and we will remain solvent. Go ahead. Um, we had unrealized gains in our investment po portfolio of $202,000. Um, and we end up the year with a total of $5,490,000 uh, and $38. And, and actually, for many people in the room, you're probably not used to look, looking at financial statements in dollars. I haven't omitted the zeros. These really are financial statements in dollars. Um, and that would be 87% of what next year's revenue would be. And we have a, a measure we call the liquidity ratio where we look at where our surplus stands against next year's anticipated expenses, and we're at 103%, which while it's not the highest we've ever been, it is still quite high. And we have at the moment restricted assets of $208,000 for research. Go ahead. Um, we did increase the annual dues this year by 5%. Um, what we've adopted is the strategy that we will have a probably have a, an inflation-related expense every year, which this year was 2%. And because we had a, a significant amount of activities added over the last two or three years that we've not costed properly in the membership dues, we had to increase the dues for three, by 3%. As I said, we are forecasting a deficit for this year. Operations themselves only show an $83,000 deficit, and the other... Um, Two items there are one-time items that will not be repeated. Go ahead. Uh, we did, uh, as part of our program this year, we've established a, a new financial initiative, which is that we are restricting $300,000 of our surplus to pay for discipline tribunals. Uh, that $300,000 is a, a, a step towards a, an ultimate goal of $750,000. Um, Discipline expenses are somewhat unpredictable, so we would rather have a cushion. It also will affect uh, or, or benefits us in protecting our nonprofit uh, status to have this money allocated as opposed to unallocated. Uh, we've also done something new with the research budget this year. Uh, previously, it basically was kind of a, at the end of the budget, how much money did we have for research? And research has become such an important part of what we do that we've changed that and we're now going to set research budget every year. Uh, this year we've chosen to set it at 9.5% of dues. We'll, we'll be reviewing that um, as we go forward to see, to see how that works. And we're going to carry the unused funds over so that over time we build up a, a bit of a cushion in the research budget so perhaps we can take on some uh, larger projects that we haven't been able to do in the past. Uh, that all changes um, that uh, liquidity ratio, which we ended the year with 103, uh, we're now going to come back into our more normal range of 50 to 80 percent. And all, the, all that means is that if nobody paid dues, we could still operate for between half a year and, and eight months. And of course, nobody's going to do that, right? Go ahead. Um, the, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar that Two years ago, we changed the way finances work, and we now have the Human Resources Finance and Audit Committee of the board. So in addition to worrying about budgets and, and expenses, we also worry about um, sort of a, a global look at HR. So um, we have to establish the pay envelope for the staff. In the finance, we of course, we do all the financing thing and prepared our budget. And in the audit, we reviewed our audit results, and I'm, I'm quite pleased to um, report that we had a clean audit. And I'm going to be shortly recommending the, the um, oh, I'm doing it right now, sorry. <laughs> I'm recommending the appointment of BDO Canada uh, as our CIA auditors for the year. Uh, I will say that uh, in August, we're going to do a routine review uh, RFP, to, just because it's the right thing to do. 
not, not that there's anything critical about BDO, but we're just going to be looking at the process. So I make this motion at this point. I need a seconder. Emil? Do I do it? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. okay. Is there any discussion on the motion? And I'll put the motion to the meeting. All those in favor, please do so by raising your right hand. Any opposed? Carried. So, John, I don't have to worry about the fact that you go to Hawaii every three months, right? No, absolutely. <laughs> when I go to Brazil. <laughs> All right. Is there any other business to bring before this meeting? there's no further business to be brought before this meeting, then, John, I need you to move the final motion, which is the general business session of the Canadian Directory be concluded. Move so move. Thank you. May I get a seconder? Rob, any discussion on the motion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Carried. See, after a year, I got this right. The general business session is now concluded, but uh, stay for one more second. There's a bit more to come. I've got uh, one more special presentation to make before moving with the rest of the program. So, go back. I got this from my father in law, to be honest. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> my next president award goes to Nancy Yake. Nancy, if you can join me. Thank you very much. Nancy is a fellow of the Society of Actuaries and a fellow of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. Nancy's career as a consulting actuary in Canada spanned for more than 30 years, primarily with Watson Wyatt during which time she specialized, spe specialized in pension, post-employment benefit plan, as well as worker compensation program. Throughout most of this period, Nancy served as the senior actuary for some of Canada's major pension plan. Nancy has served on many committees, task force, and council of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. Specifically, Nancy has served as the director of, of the Institute, a member of the Actual Standards Board for six years, and a member of the Practice Council. Nancy currently serves on the Tribunal Panel. She's also the Secretary of the Actual Foundation of Canada and has helped draft the CIA's pension prescription with Mike Hale and Normand Gendron. So please join me in thanking Nancy, Nancy for all her services. I'd like to thank Jacques, and it's quite a, an honor, especially this year, and also quite a surprise. Um, earlier when um, Jacques was presenting an award to Rob Brown, it reminded me that I must thank Rob. He was the uh, person many, many years ago who got me into my first volunteer assignment at the CIA. It was back, I think, in 1982, the Human Rights Committee, and they needed a token woman actuary. So <laughs> that... <laughs> That's how you get started. You be the token, and then you just keep going. Thank you. Thank you. I had the privilege to serve on the actual standards board with Nancy. Her dedication and willingness to get involved was extremely contagious. She's a real talent in pension, actual evidence, and workers' compensation issue, a true professional. And it's been a fantastic honor to have the opportunity to work with you, Nancy, on the Practice Council. So thank you very much. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to welcome Deborah McMillan, Chair of the 2015 Annual Meeting and the CIA Committee on Continuing Education to come to the podium to provide the housekeeping remarks.
lower that a bit. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and happy 50th anniversary to the CIA. I'm Deborah McMillan, and as chair of the, this year's annual meeting, I welcome all of you, all 700 of you, to Ottawa. Thank you to the sold out crowd for joining us on this special occasion. The sessions you will attend over the next two days are the result of significant efforts and many volunteer hours by the members of the Continuing Education Committee and its subcommittee members, as well as the hard, working, uh, hard work of many speakers who have volunteered their time to be here, some having traveled from as far away as Europe and China. I personally would like to thank Nancy Jenkinson and her team at, CIA, at the CIA for, all, for taking care of all the important details. As a thank you to our speakers, the CIA will make a donation to the Actuarial Foundation of Canada on their behalf to supplement the small token of our thanks that each speaker will receive. In addition to attending all the sessions, please plan to spend some time visiting the exhibitors. The booths will be alive until 3.30 today and from 7 to 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. There are a number of additional features we have added to this year's meeting in honor of the 50th anniversary. There's a member's wall in the foyer outside this room that lists the number of every person has ever been a member of the CIA. There's over 7,300 names. I don't know about you, but I want to make sure my name was on there. <laughs> There's also a 50th anniversary timeline in the foyer on the other side. Uh, and we encourage you to visit that and to uh, add your memories of your special occasion that occurred during your membership years. The internet lounge in the Quebec room features a display of the CIA's board over the last 50 years. And also make sure you participate in the daily data wall questions and plan to visit the CIA uh, volunteer booth, where besides finding out what volunteer opportunities there are for you, you can test your knowledge of the CIA's history. There's a little computer there where it goes through some questions for you. Uh, there's a meeting app that was sponsored by Deloitte available for your mobile device. And if you haven't already downloaded it, we encourage you to download it. It's quite cool. Uh, you could get the details from the registration desk. And if you're active on social media and you're hip, use hashtag CIA50ICA and post your uh, social media post. And I encourage you to take lots of selfies. I plan on taking selfies with Rex Murphy when he's here. <laughs> Uh, interpretation devices are available, so please pick one up if you need one at the beginning of the sessions, and please return them at the end of the day. All sessions will be recorded. Um, another reminder that we have to check out by noon on Thursday, but we have a room, the Nova Scotia room, to put your luggage in until 3.30. We have a lineup of excellent and knowledgeable keynote speakers for you who will offer information on a broad scope of interests and issues. These include Rex Murphy, as I mentioned, he'll be here this morning. Tomorrow we have Dan Gardner, Jeffrey Simpson, Chantal Ibert, and Jeffrey, Jeff Rubin, and David Suzuki. This evening's gala reception and dinner is sponsored by RGA. And if you have registered for the gala, please go to the uh, registration desk and pick up your badge uh, from 10 to 2.30 today. You might be wondering, what am I going to wear? Well, the dress code for this evening is business or semi-formal, and I strongly recommend you wear your dancing shoes. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the next two days and your stay at Ottawa. Thank you for coming, thank you. My kids would be proud. <laughs> if 
my phone rings, <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> Thank you very much, Deborah. The Alicia, is Andrew Saxton here? Oh, Andrew, how are you? <laughs> Our next speaker already has an important link with the Canadian, Canadian Institute of Actuaries, and we'll see that shortly. After a long international career in private banking, Andrew Saxton was elected MP for North Vancouver in 2008. The same year, he was named Parliamentary Secretary to the President of the Treasury Board, and following his re-election in May 2011, he was also appointed Parliamentary Secretary for Western Economic Diversification. On September 19, 2013, he was newly appointed Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Finance. Having worked abroad for a number of years, Andrew has extensive international experience and has accompanied both the Prime Minister and the Governor General as part of their official delegation to Asia. This is further highlighted through his roles as the current chair or co-chair of several parliamentary friendship group. He is also vice chair of the Canada-China Legislative Association, the Canada-Hong Kong Friendship Group, vice chair and treasurer of the Canada-Vietnam Parliamentary Association, and treasurer of the Canada-Thailand Parliamentary Association. Before I ask Andrew to turn to the stage, to come to the stage, please turn your attention to the screen for this brief video. It gives me great pleasure to rise today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. On March the 18th, 1965, Federal Senate Bill S-45, sponsored by lawyer and actuary, Senator Wallace McCutcheon, was given royal assent, thus creating the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. For decades, actuaries working at the heart of some of the country's most important employers, including banks, pension plans, and insurance companies, have been a quiet, powerful force involved in building and strengthening Canadian business and society. A titre d'expert en matière de gestion de risque et de responsable de l'évaluation des conséquences financières d'événements futurs incertains et de la prestation de conseil à cet égard, le rôle n'a jamais été aussi important qu'il est aujourd'hui. On March the 18th, the government, on behalf of all Canadians, would like to congratulate the Institute on 50 years of actuarial excellence in Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Member of Parliament for North Vancouver, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Finance, and a very close friend to the Canadian actuaries everywhere, Mr. Andrew Saxton. Thank you, Jacques, for that uh, very kind uh, introduction. And I first want to start out by congratulating the Institute on having a surplus last year. We like surpluses here in Ottawa, <laughs> so congratulations. And let me be the first, but certainly not the last, to congratulate Jacques on a successful presidency and for organizing such an action-packed annual meeting here in Ottawa. Well done, Jacques. Congratulations. <laughs> Now, it's a great honor for me to be here today. And, uh, you know, I actually took actuarial, an actuarial science course at Western University as part of my commerce degree. Now, I don't remember much about the course, but, but I do remember that it was not an easy course. In fact, it was the only course where we were allowed to take our textbook into the exam. It was an open book exam because the formulas were about a mile long. So I certainly understand and appreciate what all of you actuaries have gone through to be here today. Now, who would have thought back then that I would be addressing such a distinguished group of actuaries here in Ottawa? Now, seeing that, that video statement in the House of Commons really helps to bring home the close connection that the CIA has with Parliament Hill. And as you probably know, another session of Parliament is coming to a close, and so it's a good time to reflect on where we are. Just as your own organization, the Canadian Institute of Actuaries, seeks to provide leadership to your membership, who in turn help numerous Canadian businesses, organizations, and individuals, our government also seeks to provide leadership and vision for what our country can be, both now and into the future. As the CIA is celebrating its 50th anniversary, it is a great milestone to remember the actuarial profession's importance here in Canada. As I said in my speech in the House of Commons, 
Actuaries occupy important positions in so many key industries here in Canada. You provide valuable insight and services, and among other things, you help businesses and governments to manage risk. As you know, what separates winners from losers is not what risks they face, but how they plan and manage those risks. I understand that uh, an actuary recently rode across the Atlantic Ocean. Now that brings risk management to a whole new level. <laughs> and who said actuaries are boring, right? Now I think our government and your organization look to the future and consider ways we can make things better while preparing for the challenges and risks that lie ahead. But let's step back and look at where we are today. Canada is in an envied position. We have created over 1.2 million net new jobs since the depths of the recession. That's one of the strongest job creation records in the G7. The overwhelming majority of those jobs are full-time, private sector, and in high-wage industries. Canada has a balanced budget with a healthy surplus. Canada is one of only two G7 countries to maintain a rock-solid AAA credit rating with a stable outlook from all major credit rating agencies. And this was all done while keeping taxes low. In fact, taxes are at, an all, at, at a 50-year low, half a century. John Diefenbaker was Prime Minister the last time that taxes were this low. However, some Canadians are still looking for work, others are struggling to help elderly family members, and others are wondering what the future for their children will look like. As long as Canadians are grappling with these questions, our government's job is not over. It's why Finance Minister Joe Oliver introduced Economic Action Plan 2015, a balanced budget, low tax plan to create jobs growth and security. Canada's economy has seen one of the best economic performances among all G7 countries in recent years, both during the global recession and throughout the recovery. But Canada is not immune to the global economic challenges beyond our borders. We've seen U.S. growth slow in the first quarter. There is still significant unrest in European countries, and even Chinese economic growth has, has diminished. Our fiscal foundation is solid, but we must stay the course and continue to introduce measures for growth and prosperity. Our government prides itself in sound financial management, and our recent budget reflects that. So let me outline some of the key points of our economic action plan that I believe also largely fall in line with your industry's objectives, which is forward-looking and constantly concerned with its duty to the Canadian public. First, as I mentioned, we introduced a balanced budget. After helping craft two consecutive federal budgets, one with the late Jim Flaherty and the other with Minister Oliver as their parliamentary secretary, I can say with confidence that steering our nation back into the black was no easy feat. As actuaries, I'm sure you know full well that it requires tough decisions, a focus on priorities and sound judgment, and sometimes taking calculated risks. A multi-billion dollar budget does not balance itself. I am pleased to say that the deficit has been reduced from $55.6 billion at the height of the global economic crisis to a projected surplus this year of $1.4 billion and $1.7 billion next year a solid foundation upon which to build more sustainable public finances. But a balanced budget is more than a simple achievement. It matters for several important reasons. It allows the government to keep taxes low. It means not saddling our children and grandchildren with high debt. It ensures that funds go to important social programs like education and health care rather than debt repayment. It means maintaining our top credit rating and keeping lower interest payments. It gives the government more flexibility to respond to a crisis like a recession, a war, or a natural disaster. So those who work in the insurance industry will understand a balanced budget is an insurance plan. It's an insurance policy for the future in a time of uncertainty, which makes it all the more important that we have an introduced a balanced budget legislation, which ensures that the hard-won gains achieved by our government will remain in place for future generations. It ensures against, as you would call, intergenerational inequity. Economic Action Plan 2015 is also building on our record to help Canadians prepare for their retirement and save for their future. There is a part, first part to that story, though. We promise that while giving Canadians more options to save for their future and enjoy their retirement, we wouldn't burden them 
with higher taxes. We have cut taxes in every way the government collects them. This is for all Canadians, for small businesses, for seniors, for families, and the list goes on. We have received instant opposition here in Parliament every time we lowered taxes. But we know that the results are clear. More of Canadians' money is staying in their pockets where it belongs and not with the government. But moving forward, income security is important too. Canadians' retirement savings are typically held in tax-assisted registered plans, such as registered pension plans, registered retirement savings plans, retirement, registered retirement income funds, and tax-free savings accounts. Economic Action Plan 2015 adjusted the RIF minimum withdrawal factors that apply in respect of ages 71 to 94 to better reflect more recent long-term historical real rates of return and expected inflation. By permitting more capital preservation, the new factors will help reduce the risk of, un of outliving one's savings, while ensuring that the tax deferral provided on RRSP and RIFs savings continues to serve a retirement income purpose. Now, speaking of tax-free savings accounts, this is a flexible, registered, general-purpose savings vehicle that allows Canadians to earn tax-free investment income and capital gains. 11 million Canadians have opened tax-free savings accounts, with the vast majority of them being low- and middle-income earners. 60% of the people who contributed the maximum last year earned less than $60,000. This is why we increased the tax-free savings account's annual contribution limit to $10,000, which introduces further flexibility for Canadians to save for their future. Let me briefly touch on pensions now. Our government has taken extra efforts to ensure all Canadians have sufficient income replacement when they retire. Recently, we announced that we are open to giving Canadians the option to voluntarily contribute more to the Canada Pension Plan. We also continue our work on target benefit plans, TBPs. Currently, 96% of pension plan assets in Canada are in defined benefit pension plans, as compared to 42% in the US and 15% in Australia. This is not sustainable. Your association has also seen that employers are facing pressure to move their plans to defined contribution models, which expose employees to market volatility and increased risk. Our government feels that TBPs offer a middle ground on future income security, but are also sustainable. They are flexible, voluntary, and combine, combine features of both defined benefit and defined contribution plans, giving return predictability to employees and cost certainty to employers. But let me be clear, current pensioners and retirees can be assured it is not our intention to allow conversion uh, pensions to target benefit plans without their explicit consent. We want to provide Canadian workers and employers with more options for their pension plans, and TBPs are another option. In closing, Canada has come a long way since the Great Recession. We are admired around the world. According to Bloomberg magazine, we're the second best place in the world to invest. We have the soundest banking system in the world, according to the World Economic Forum, and it's the seventh year in a row that they've given that to our banking system. Despite the recent oil shock, our economy is expected to grow at close to 2% this year and pick up momentum next year. We achieved a balanced budget, all while investing large amounts of funding in growing innovation, research, and manufacturing here in Canada. We have given record funding support to help math and science sectors, hopefully resulting in more actuaries in the future. We are supporting Canadian families. The typical family of four now has an extra $6,600 in their pockets each year. I'm proud of the accomplishments of our government. We have taken important steps to ensure we leave the country in the best possible shape for future generations. This is where your institute and our government are closely aligned calculating the risks, and making sure Canadians are in the best po possible shape for the future. So on behalf of myself, my fellow members of Parliament, and the Prime Minister, and all Canadians, let me offer my best wishes for a productive meeting and a worthy 50th anniversary celebration. Thank you. Merci beaucoup.
Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Saxton. All right, the next little bit falls under, I'm president, I get to do what I want. <laughs> so for this, I'd like all of you to rise again. It's good in the morning to stretch anyway, get a bit of exercise. And I want you to put your hand on your chest, because this is my tribute to a Canadian actuary. So hold on to your hats. OK, let's go. Music? <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning. Music. We, we did practice a few times. This is good, folks. Come on. Let's prove to the world that actually we can have a bit of fun. We're going to start the 50th party, and we're going to rock. And I am not looking at anyone's shoes. <laughs> Trust me, you'll love this. <laughs> and by the way, it's recorded by video. <laughs> Again, my kids would be so proud. <laughs> okay, sounds like we're, I heard music. Oh, you got the thumbs up? See, now it's gonna be flawless, I know it. Okay, get a smile. I'm not an accountant or a lawyer, but I'm sure that they are solid professionals. Je suis fier de faire partie d'une profession remplie de personnes intelligentes et honorables. A profession that helps people, business, and government do the right thing and do that thing right. Une profession qui offre des conseils et des services actuariels de la plus haute qualité. A profession which pushes the limit of current wisdom and thinking for the benefit of all. En fait, une profession qui fait passer l'intérêt du public devant le sien. I cherish and I'm honored that I'm part of a profession ranked the best there is twice in the last five years. I speak English and French. I believe in a CIA which publishes and inspires great work in English et en français and has done so for 50 years. Je connais les acronymes ICA, MMPRCE, EDSC, ARQ. I also know what IAA, IFRS, IASP, and IAN stand for. I believe the appointed actuary is a proud and noble role. I believe in principle-based standards of practice, not rules-based. I'm very proud of our Canadian standards of practice, lesquels ont inspiré des actuaires aux quatre coins de la planète. I believe in a CIA which creates and publishes strong public position. Je crois à la participation des actuaires au débat public sur les gens jutelés. I believe in a CIA which builds strong relationship with regulators and other actual associations. I believe in a Canadian actual profession which maintains a strong presence internationally. I am extremely proud to tell people that I'm a fellow of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries. Je suis très fier de dire aux gens que je suis un fellow de l'Institut canadien des actuaires. Je m'appelle Jacques Tremblay and I am a Canadian actuary. Bonjour, je m'appelle Rob Stapleford, president designé pour un autre 28 heures. Good morning, I'm Rob Stapleford, your, your president-elect, and this is the one moment in the whole thing where I ha can do what I want. <laughs> I want to thank, thank Jacques for his, his presentation just, just now. You may recall a few years ago, Molson had a, this was a, based on a Molson beer commercial. I am a Canadian, it's because Canadian teams never won the Stanley Cup for many years, and that obviously that trend has, has continued. Particularly in Toronto, I might add. <laughs> but as president-elect, the one thing, uh, this is my moment, so unbeknownst to Jacques and Teresa, we contacted the Molson Brewing Company, which is as I speak, delivering 20 cases of beer to their room, 
And everyone, all 700, are invited to their room for a pint to share I am a Canadian after the gala tonight. <laughs>